Anyway, as Tina mentioned, I work uh, in intensive setting where a group, small group of conservations are coming for residential retreat for three weeks. And during these three weeks, they uh, do six hours of yoga every day. Now, only one hour of asana, but five hours of other yoga practices. As a result, um, I, I'm lucky in, uh, to see a, very often a great spiritual transformation in these clients. And when I talk about it um, with uh, other colleagues, um, I'm always, or well, not always, but very often asked, is spirituality part of our scope of practice? But that what sort of sparked my idea of talk today, uh, talking about spirituality in yoga therapy. To me personally, uh, there is no yoga therapy without spirituality, but that's my experience. But I also understand the, the difficulties in uh, dealing with spirituality because until, um, until about two de decades ago, um, spirituality was inherently connected with religion and did not exist on its own. And uh, about two decades ago, researchers started to redefine spirituality. And I'm going to read you what they think now spirituality is versus religion. Uh, and that's the quote from the research paper. Spirituality is a personal quest for understanding answers to ultimate questions about life, about meaning, and about relationship to the sacred or transcendent. That's spirituality. The religion, on the other hand, is an organized system of beliefs, practices, rituals, and symbols designed to facilitate closeness to the sacred or transcendent. Uh, so the misconception of that spirituality equals religion and misconception of asana to be all of yoga uh, creates a lot of confusion in our clients, but also in many yoga therapists. And so I think the subject of spirituality needs to be talked about for a long time so that we do understand that there is no um, yoga therapy or no yoga without spirituality. Now, why am I saying this? Because Paramahansa Yogananda says yoga is primarily a spiritual discipline. Shivananda says yoga refers to certain state of consciousness as well as methods that help one to reach the state of union between one's individual consciousness and the universal consciousness. And Satyananda says, Patanjali wrote Yoga Sutras to explain the process and practical methods of raising the level of awareness, gaining deeper wisdom, exploring potential of the mind, and eventually going beyond the mind. All those great ones before us are talk about yoga as a spiritual discipline, and somehow uh, we've lost it because what gets the headlines and usually the dollars in yoga and cancer care? Symptom resolution. So decreased fatigue, decreased nausea, enhanced cognition, decreased pain, and increased range of motions. That's what gets attention of the people. So, how can we include spirituality in yoga therapy sessions? And I, I bow to all four speakers before because they all gave the examples of, of using spirituality in yoga therapy. And I have a feeling that most of you <coughs> might be using spirituality in yoga therapy, except you may not be even aware that you're doing it. Uh, I came across a wonderful book which is called Radical Remission. This is a researcher who talked to about 
over a thousand cancer patients who had spontaneous remission. And suddenly, one day they were diagnosed with stage four cancer, the next day they had no cancer. She also talked to the healers in, in different traditions. And she came across about 75 different factors that, that were uh, causing that remission. But out of 75, only nine happened in every case. And out of those nine, three were spiritual. I'll read you all nine, but I will start with the body first. So radically changing the diet, using herbs and supplements, uh, increasing positive emotions, releasing suppressed emotions, following one's intuition, taking control over one's health, embracing social support, having a purpose of life, and deepening spiritual connection. Now, as I went through those nine, I went through four, actually five, Panchakosha. <coughs> I wanted to give you two examples of my clients, or our clients, <coughs> from these uh, retreats. Uh, one example I like because healing does not mean curing. And <coughs> In this case, it was stage four colon cancer, uh, which, well, you know, the, it, it was, the guy was given about two months to live. <coughs> and he was really working hard in the, in the uh, retreats for those three weeks. Um, during these three weeks, we do tests, psychological tests, first day and the last day, and we discuss it with the clients. And here's what he was saying. Oh, he came to us full of anger, full of regret, and full of fear of dying. When we reviewed together improved test results at the end of the retreat, Harry said, yes, that's about how I feel, at peace with myself and the world. And one more thing, when I came to the program, I was afraid of death. Now I'm not. I will live as long as I can and spend as much time with my son as possible. So that's one. The other one was even more dramatic. About 70 year old um, English gentleman who was uh, pr still practicing a therapist. We witnessed a dramatical spiritual transformation which opened, and I quote, a whole new dimension in the experience of being alive for him. Changing his attitude towards life, and again quote, wanting things straightforward, nothing concealed, a higher integrity, as if the heart could not stand anything not quite right and not straight and authentic. These are his words. Uh, as an atheist, Nick suddenly found someone, something more. And again, I quote, something out and beyond my small self, something altogether larger and more powerful than myself, to whom the only right attitude seemed to be praise. This has given my life a new sense of direction Interestingly enough, he did not know anything about yoga. He's never done yoga. After this three weeks retreat, he went back home. He started, started to study yoga. And today he's doing his therapy based on um, Patanjali Yoga Sutras. He's discovered it's Yoga Sutras. He says, this is the best psychology that can be. <laughs> so yoga is a spiritual practice. The healing experience often demands a spiritual response. And all we do is we just facilitate, we create the safe environment to create possibility of healing through client spiritual transformation, independently of their cancer diagnosis. Thank you very much.